Hey everyone, today on the plastic canvas we're painting a dark druid from Mansions of Madness. So welcome to another Mansions of Madness miniature painting video. Mansions of Madness is a co-op exploration game where players are taking on the role of paranormal investigators, depending on the scenario, going into different locations um, to investigate some paranormal seeming events. Uh, events, sorry, to to work out what's going on. Um, fantastic game, absolutely love it. Really, really cool app that goes along with it to um, tell the story and keep track of enemy stats and all those sorts of things. Um, and really, really cool horror, Lovecraftian Cthulhu type theme. And of course, being a horror type theme, there needs to be some baddies to go up against. And our dark druid here is one of those baddies. Um, so, yeah, you can see the... Um, the mini is glued into the base, which we did who, a couple of years ago when we first got the game, well before I had any plans of doing any painting. Um, and these guys are notorious, not just the Dark Druid, but all of them in general, are notorious for not staying in the base. Um, and so we, we glued them all in um, back when we first got it, just so that they would stay in there, and we didn't have to keep putting them back in every time we, we took the game out. So that's why the, the mini's in the base. And you can see there's a couple of cutout spots here for um, parts of the card that gets inserted into the base to come through. There's the name, a couple of numbers that get referred to during the game, and then a little bit of text on the back. So for the Dark Druid, he's clad in dark robes. These pagan priests are mortal men driven to unnatural practices. Um, and then on the card, um, some of these I can't get out, but for the Dark Druid I can in the card, oh, not still not super easy, um, we've got a little bit of artwork there. So you can see there's sort of some greyish brown robes. Um, and then one thing I wasn't sure of, and so I went to the trusty internet to try and find out the answer, and it seems that everyone is super duper confused of, is what exactly he is holding in his hand. So, on the on the card here, and it's funny because this is cut off and you can actually um, find an image, and I think I might have used it on the, um, on the little intro part there, the artwork of it. Um, the thing that he's holding in his hand here, which is actually the opposite hand to the actual mini, I've got no idea what it, even what it is in the artwork. It... Kind of looks like a plastic bag. I don't know. Um, it's really, really hard to work out what it is. And just the more forums you visit um, is the more theories you get on what this thing actually is. I did see one, um, one image of it being painted where it kind of looked like kind of a candle sort of thing. So there is, I'm not sure if you can tell by, if I, actually, yeah, that's that sort of holding the focus there. So it looks like he's holding some sort of a stick. And then this is maybe like some... Oh, get into focus. Maybe this is like some sort of smoke kind of thing coming off it. Anyway, so what I'm thinking I might do is, yeah, just, just paint it as like a, a brown stick. And then maybe I'll do like some blue and green sort of smoke coming off it. And then maybe a little bit of OSL just on the edge of the... the um, Sleeve there, um, just that light reflecting off of it. Not really sure, but yeah, that's sort of the the best I can go with. I kind of feel like, well, for certainly from the images online, everyone's just kind of made it up. So I don't really think there's a wrong way that you can go about it. Anyway, so um, yeah, he's already primed. It was primed back before I decided to start this channel. So yep, that's already done. But there's other videos in this series where you can see me priming and the primer primer that I use. Um, so yeah, so just going to get into base coating 
Um, so starting with the lowest layer of the of the mini painting inside out. So starting with a layer that everything else is over the top of, and any time it's a person, it's always the skin because then, like in this specific case, the robe goes over the top of the skin. So you want to start with the lowest layer and then work up from there until you get to the top layer. So you're going to start with the skin and then I'll get the, the robe painted and then do the, um, the stick thing with the smoke coming off or whatever it is. Um, this guy's going to be really, really simple. Um, so for his robe, I'm just going to mix a little bit of brown and grey together. Just my... Um, so at the moment, I've still just got basically one of each colour. So my muddy brown and my cloudy grey, mostly brown with a little bit of grey, um, just to match the, the artwork a little bit. And yeah, so that's it. So this guy's going to be really, really simple. Shouldn't take too long. So yeah, so just going to get into base coating and start with the skin, then do the robe, finish off with the... Uh, with whatever that is in his hand.
Okay, so that uh, base coat there's had a good bit of time to dry. Um, one thing I did notice after I stopped filming was that um, his feet were, were sticking at the bottom of his, of his robe there. I didn't notice that detail as I was painting. Um, so I have gone back and touched that up, but it was about 30 seconds worth of painting, so I didn't think it was it was worth um, hit and record for. But yeah, so that's, that's done. So base coat's finished. So now the next stage is going to be to, to do a wash over the whole mini. I'm going to use Agrax over the robe just to brown it up a little bit more, fall into the recesses so that, that I can um, do some highlighting, um, Reichland flesh shade on the skin. <clears throat> Sorry, but um, also what I want to do is just um, a little bit of highlighting on um, sort of the the smoke coming out of... I'm, I'm just going to call it the magic stick. I don't actually know what it is. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm, I'm happy with the blend from the green through to the blue through to the purple. But I'm just thinking that because it's quite small, um, once this guy's in the middle of the table and everyone's sitting around the edge of the table playing the game... Um, the, the contrast between the layers of the smoke is um, probably not going to be, be seen that well. So what I want to do is pick out some green highlights at the top and then some purple highlights at the bottom just to really emphasise the, the colours that it's, it's blending through just to bring that contrast out a little bit more. So I'm going to do that. So some green and purple highlights on the smoke. Um, and then, yeah, Agrax wash on the robe and Rikon Flesh Shade wash on the skin. So the washes over the robe and the skin has, has dried now um, and created a nice bit of contrast um, in those uh, recesses, um, created a nice bit of shading. So now it's time to do some, some highlighting. So with being a little bit mindful of not repeating myself too much from one video to another, but the, the, the highlighting technique that I'm working on at the moment trying to improve on is just a simple feathering technique. And the reason I'm going with a feathering technique is that it works. It's well, so far I've found that it works really, really well um, alongside using a wash as the method for shading. So by feathering, the way that I go about doing that is I paint with the highlight tone on the spots where the light would be hitting. So for argument's sake, you can see, um, actually this is, there'll be good spots on the back here. So you can see all of these, the high spots in the robe here um, as, the, as the material is folding. Um, and then after just putting the paint on the spots where the light would be hitting, um, washing the paint off the brush and then with the wet bristles, just then feathering the edge of the um, of that highlight tone out towards where the where the shading is, where the where the wash has, has settled. And the idea of that is that it creates a nice gradual transition from the highlight to the shade. Um, and it's been really, really good for um, you know it's 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 a fairly quick way of going going about it. Um, you don't have to build up lots and lots and lots of layers from the, the shade through to the highlight. And so for a mini like this where it's pretty simple, um, but I still want it, but you know, there is still enough texture in there um, to warrant 
you know, actually spending some time doing some highlighting. It's I found it a really, really good technique for that. Um, it's not an an all purpose technique, um, but for for one like this, it's definitely definitely been working well. So that's how I'm going to go about highlighting um, the robe. So yeah, just with that highlight tone, just pick out where the light's going to be hitting, um, wash the paint out of the bristles, or at least most of it, and then with the wet bristles, then just feather it out. Um, and what is also um, a thing that I'm I'm doing as well is um, say like towards the top of the robe here, um, you know, you can see a fairly flat section just in there. So that'll get some highlighting, which I'll then feather feather downwards. Um, but then I'll probably lighten off that tone a little bit more, um, and then hit the higher spot of that flat, flat section and then feather it out a little bit less and then maybe a little bit lighten it off a little bit more hit even the higher spot feather it out e even less to get another level of transition from um like the, the lightest highlight where most amount of the light will be hitting down through to you know where still some light's going to be hitting but less anyway it's that's that's the sort of process that that i'll be going through and yeah hopefully that comes across in the in the video so yeah going to get to that um and then yeah, obviously just just basic highlighting on the skin so just 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 picking out the the high spots but just going back to um the the skin tone um, and the highlight tone that I'll be using for the robe is just the same tone that I used for the base coat. So brown mixed with, with grey. Um, and I found that's the easiest way to get a tone that, that looks correct. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and start doing some highlighting. Now just quickly at this point, I just mixed a little bit of dry and retarder in with the paint that I'm using, um, just because where where I am, um, it's it's a bit warm today, um, and I just noticed that that bit of paint that I was um, just quickly highlighted, just started the highlighting on the top of the hood there, um, dried a bit quicker than I wanted it to, so I just want to have a little bit more time to blend it out. Um, so yes, yeah, so I just put a bit of bit of dry and retarder in there, just because it is a bit warm today.
right, so there we go. So there's some pretty sort of simple highlighting going on there. Um, it's it's definitely not perfect. Um, one uh, one thing is, yeah, it's probably a little bit warm to be painting at the moment, and I just wasn't quite able to get the blends that um, I really wanted to be able to get. The paint was just drying that little bit too quick, even with the uh, with the drying retarder in there. Um, but there were a couple of spots that I'm that I'm happy with. Um, so the contrast I was able to get, um, like on top of the sleeves, I was happy with how that was looking. Um, some of these creases on the front there, I thought the front was looking um, probably quite a bit better than what the back was. Um, but anyway, that's all all part of the learning curve. Um, and there's a couple of spots where, um, like say with this crease, actually there was probably on the back here, um, just with these, these creases there, how I... Um, got to quite a almost to white um just at one sort of spot on the crease there and then blending away from there I, I was happy with with how that's looking um so yeah so a couple of spots there i'm 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 liking the look of some other spots that i'm not but um definitely spent enough time um highlighting this mini um with the level of detail and the size of it it's it's not really worth going any further than that and in the middle of the table um i think there'll be enough contrast there for that to look pretty good or at least that you know it'll you'll be able to see the folds in the clothes. Whether it's good is another is a whole other other discussion. Um, so like I've been doing with the other human looking um, minis, um, I'm going to be um, putting a prime down on the base um, and then using a Grelin Earth, um, which is a Citadel texture paint. Um, this one here um, to then get a cracked look um, and then I'm going to paint that up to, to look like stone so that all the all the human looking um, minis look like they're standing on on cracked stone um, so I'm just going to do the prime now um, and as I put that on it's my brush on primer um, I'm going to do uh, like a, a curved edge to it so that when it's painted it gives the illusion that it looks like um, it's going beyond the the limit of where I've painted r rather than doing like a, a defined say like square for instance um, that's quite a rigid shape and that won't give that that impression like it will if um, if I do a wavy sort of sort of edge um, so yeah so just gonna do the prime there um, and then when I come back in for the next part of the video um, I'll uh, put the put the acrylic and earth on gone off so now it's time to do the grill and earth coat on here so that it all crack um, and then I can paint it up to, to look like stone so yeah so just the grill and earth here um, just I've done this with a few minis now um, and yeah definitely the key so far has been putting it on really really thick for, for you know lots of cracks um, and then yeah thinning, thinning it off a little bit um, for some smaller cracks um, one thing that's actually sort of going to work a little bit in my advantage is that when we stuck down the um, the mini, as you can see, just see there's a little bit of a gap underneath the feet and the actual base. One thing that's been a little bit tricky with the other one so far is actually painting it up against the mini and not trying to, because, you know, putting it on thick, um, not trying to sort of slop it onto the, the feet or at least the bottom of the mini, but I won't sort of have that problem so much because I'll be able to get that get that brush underneath there which is going to be pretty handy so yeah so just straight from the straight from the pot putting it on thick um, to get some some good size cracks There we go, so got that acrylic on earth on there. Um, that's pretty quick, it just takes, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. Um, one thing I tried to focus a little bit more on this time that I haven't done the other times is really trying to keep it thick right up until the mini. Um, and as I said just before, having that bit of a gap underneath the feet with the way that we glued it helped a bit with that because what's happened with some of the other ones is that it's got, gets really, really good cracks around the edge because 
like out here where there's no mini to be worrying about um, slopping the paint onto. Um, I can get it nice and thick, gets good cracks around the edge, but then it doesn't crack as much around the actual base of the mini. And what that sort of then makes it look like is that each mini is just standing, like has chosen a spot to stand where there aren't any stones. So it's like all these guys are walking along, like, oh, there's a nice spot in between the stones, I'll stand there. Um, whereas I want it to look like they're actually standing on top of the stones. So I want those cracks to really go up against the mini. So hopefully this time around, um, I'll be able to um, be able to get that, get that effect. Um, one thing I did sort of want to um, mention a little bit is, I, I, I think I mentioned it at the end of the last part of the video where I was highlighting, was that like I was pretty happy with how the highlighting looks on the front, um, but on the back not so much, especially down down the bottom here, um, don't sort of have those blends going as well as I'd, I'd like to. What I did is I um, put a tile from the game um, on the table and just sat um, the mini in the middle of the tile and then I just sat at the edge of the table just to have a look at what it would look like for someone that's playing the game sitting you know away a bit um, and the contrasts were actually really really good um, it really gave the effect of those folds happening in the clothes um, so I suppose like one thing that's really really easy to do is to get bogged down in making every little detail look perfect um, and that's really really easy to get caught up in when you've got the mini just a couple of inches from your face um, when you're painting and you see all those little details but if you're doing like what I'm doing where you're painting miniatures for board games no one is ever going to look at the mini this close unless they pick it up and really closely inspect it um, but for the most part these are going to be sitting in the middle of the table um, you know, being looked at from about a metre away or so. And so you need the mini to look good at that point rather than, you know, a couple of inches from your face. It's great if it does, um, but, yeah, the, the main focus is to get it, or at least for me, is to get it looking good from um, the distance that someone's actually going to be sitting back from playing the game. And from that distance, it does look really, really good. Well, not really, really good, but it, 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 looks, it looks all right. So, um, yeah, so not worried so much about how that highlighting is looking down the bottom there because back from the distance that someone's going to be playing the game from, you can easily see those ripples in there. But there are some spots like up along the top there and along the sleeves that I'm, that I'm happy with. So, yeah, bits and pieces that I'm liking, parts that could be improved, but with it actually sitting in the middle of the table, it's, um, it's looking the part. So, yeah, so we'll give that some time to dry um, and then we'll come back after it's done its cracking thing and we'll paint up the base. All right, so there we go. The Agrilla Earth has dried, done its cracky thing, and yeah, looking really, really good. Um, in terms of the size and consistency of the cracks compared to the other minis that I've done so far, it's definitely got the the biggest cracks across the whole surface. The other ones that I've done, they've had um, some spots where, you know, they have had some big cracks, um, but then there's been spots where there's been no cracking happening at all um, because of the, the thickness of the actual paint going on. But as I showed in the last part of the video, because there's a bit of a gap underneath um, the Dark Druid's feet, um, I was able to get a good consistent thickness across the whole surface, and that means it's cracked really consistently as well. Um, in terms of the actual scale of the cracks, I think some of the other ones have probably looked a little bit better, um, just because in um, like relative to the size of the mini, for just going for like a uh, cracked stone sort of look, um, some of these are probably a little bit big purely just for the look that I'm going for. Um, but absolutely not a problem at all. I'm, I'm really, really happy with how it's looking. It really gets that look across really, really well. But it's good to sort of know, um, you know, with, with the thickness that I was able to get with this, um, the level to which it's cracked compared to others where it didn't go on quite as thick as what this did. Um, but yeah, so now it's time to, to paint it up. So just like the other ones, just going for that stone look. So using a grey base um, and then... Yeah, we're blending in some, some blacks and whites to add some texture, um, but focusing the white on where I want to create the, uh, the effect of some light hitting, um, black in there to, to add a bit of texture, but um, also using it to create some shadows. 
So yeah, so just going to get into that. Um, as much as possible, I'll be trying to keep the paint on top of um, each of the stones um, so it doesn't bleed into the cracks and then turn them grey. Try and keep that contrast. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into painting it up. Painting it up. So far, just in terms of ease of actual painting, um, having these bigger cracks is making it a lot, lot easier to be able to to paint it up because I'm actually able to sort of individually paint each stone um, rather than in the other ones that I've done because the cracks have been much smaller. I've done more of a tapping motion to try and keep the paint out of the um, out of the actual cracks to stop it from bleeding through. Um, but yeah, it's with these bigger cracks, it's really quite easy to. Um, just to paint each individual stone. I mean, through these sections here where I'm painting at the moment, it's sort of back to that tapping action to try and um, not put the bristles down in between the cracks. Um, but yeah, it's it's purely in terms of ease of painting, it's, it's definitely easier. Um, so yeah, um, so it's all, all those sort of little things to, to weigh up with the actual look that you're going for, um, whether you purely want um, you know, go for a certain size crack or whether you want it to be easy to paint. Um, yeah, few few things to consider. But um yeah, it's also good to have that have that control where you can paint it on thicker, get some get some good cracks, or put it on a bit thinner, get some smaller ones. Um but yeah, it's um certainly certainly easier to paint um having the bigger ones. Oh, and just also, um, I've left out, uh, even though I am wet blending, I've left out drying retarder this time around. For the other ones, I have used drying retarder just so that I have a little bit longer to be able to blend them. But because of the size of the cracks, I did think it would be easier to paint. I've left that drying retarder out um, just so that it's not... The paint's not quite as thin, so it's not running as much, so I've got a bit more control with it. Um, and yeah, I'm having no, and it's like it's night time here where I am at the moment. It's quite a warm night, it's, um, but that's not um, speeding up the, the drying process at all. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's working well just to be painting, you know, like it's paint's thinned down a little bit w with water. But um, not having that drying retarder is meaning that um, yeah, I've got a bit more control over it. And yeah, I'm able to keep it out of those cracks. But I still definitely have well and truly enough time to be able to go back in with the grey, the um, the black and the white, sorry, to to create those textures. It's not drying out on me too fast, um, but it's thick enough so that it's not going anywhere that I that I don't want it to. coat for the base done. Um, what I'm going to do is leave that to dry so that then when it's dried I'll come back and um, using more blacks and whites rather than greys um, really pick out the spots where I want to have really controlled shadows and highlights especially on some of these bigger stones that are going to pick up more of the light because at the moment obviously with the paint being wet and blending hence the name wet blending um, it's got those gradual transitions where I do want to have um, some um, more controlled um, harsher contrasts on the edges of some of the stones so I'll come back in when it's dry and the paint that I put on won't blend it will purely just sit exactly where I want it to. Um, so yeah, so that'll be the next step just to do that that more controlled highlighting. So we'll come back when that's dry and um, do that next step. 
All right, so that base has dried now. Um, so now as I do the next coat with the um, with a more focus on highlighting rather than just actually basing it, the paint's not going to mix in, so I'll be able to control, um, or better control exactly where it goes, so I'll be able to pick out more of the edges of the stones and concentrate those, uh, those highlights a little bit more. So I'm swapping down from my um, regiment brush, um, just my, uh, these are the ones that I'm using, Wargamer Regiment one, which I use to, to base, swapping down to the character one now just for a little bit more control. So yes, it'll be a lot more whites, um, not so much black, um, to, yeah, just to create a little bit more contrast. Um, and yeah, pick out that texture a little bit more. So what I'll be doing is sort of picking some spots where um, I'll sort of be creating the effect of a little bit more light hitting. Um, some of these bigger stones, um, pick out some of them to um, paint up a little bit lighter to try and give the effect of them kind of sitting up a little bit more than the other ones. And then when I've gone across and like got a level of contrast and texture that I'm happy with, then what I'm going to do is swap to my Insane Detail brush and with black go in and pick out some of the sections and just repaint in between some of the cracks um, and just by doing sections like say this section here and then that section there and then just a little bit over here that'll then again add an extra level of of texture by making it look like some of the sections are sticking up a little bit more than some of the others so between adding this contrast and texture with the lighter paint, picking out some of the stones to paint wholly as being um, lighter, um, and then painting in some of the um, some of the cracks in groups with just black, um, that'll add a, add a little bit more texture, a little bit more contrast, and it just push that effect a little bit more of the stone. So yeah, so just gonna go through that, that process. Um, and yeah, then we'll check in with how I'm going to, going to finish it off. So the painting part of the base is now done. Um, so in, there's a lot more contrast and texture in the the stone look than what there was before, um, just by picking out some of these stones to paint in different shades of like a light grey. So you know, got quite a light one there, a couple of different shades in there, um, and picked out some of the edges, um, like this one here, which has sort of got a bit of a blend from a shadow through to a highlight there as it comes out of the shadow from behind the, the druid. Um, and then yeah, just picked out some of these areas like just in there, and then here, and then here, just to paint that black into the cracks, just to make them look like they're just sticking up a little bit more, just to add an extra little extra little element. So yeah, painting part's done, but um, 
I recently put in um, another painting order with the site that I get all of my stuff through um, just to get some new, um, as I'm coming up to some different games that have some different colours in them, I need some new paints to add to my collection. Um, and then so while I was doing that, um, one thing that I have wanted to get for a little while is some basing materials. And I'm just starting off with some really, really simple stuff, just some um, tufts of grass. Um, and this here is one of the ones that I've got. So it's the Army Painter Battlefield, Battlefields XP, and it is Swamp tuft. Um, so there's 77 tufts in here, ranging from really big ones down this end through to really small ones at this end. And there's 77, 77 of them in here. Um, 30 really small ones, 35 medium ones, and then 12 big ones. So what I was thinking is I might put some of the smaller ones just in some of these spots, maybe like one out here on its own and then a couple, maybe one there, one there, um, just that will sort of look like they're kind of grown up through um, the cracks in the stone, just to add an extra little element. So this will be my first time doing this, so we'll see how we go. Um, I also got um, a um, army painter, um, just hobby knife um, that I'll use for like mold lines and things in the future. So I'll be able to um, you know pick off the tufts with with that and glue them down. Um, it does say on the back to if it comes into focus um, to glue them on. So I'm just going to use some super glue. I did do a little bit of research to try and find out if people recommended like basing glue. I have seen that and Army Painter again. Um, they have a basing glue just to see if people recommended that or if super glue was fine. Um, and it just depended on which forum and which site you went to as to what answer you got. I couldn't work it out. Um, it seemed like super glue would be fine. So I'm going to use super glue for this. Um, if it stains the paint at all like super glue can sometimes leave that white kind of frosty look oh well lesson learnt um if not then hey super glue will do the job so i'm just going to pick out a couple of these couple of these smaller ones and and then stick them down um i might do just a little bit of a a trial run first just to sort of see how they look So the glue has dried on those little tufts of grass there and yeah that's looking really really good I'm really really happy with that I'm um, super super simple effect obviously I haven't actually done anything to make them um, just bought them um, and you know just pulled them straight from the packet um, but yeah really really cool effect um, and I think sitting like on top of the the cracked stone they're looking like they're coming through the cracks and they're just sort of growing sort of organically um, I think sort of sells that that look that I'm going for pretty well of where this guy is just is is walking along a stone path or something like that, um, and yeah, it just sort of adds a an extra little element to it. Um, but yeah, very very little effort, and but um, but I think sort of looks the part. So really happy with that. So just the the last thing to do now is to varnish the miniature, um, just so that. Um, through um, general wear and tear from the game um, none of the paint especially on the base is going to come off um, one thing I have noticed is that if um, there was a, a cup one of the hunting horrors that I painted and one of the ghost miniatures that I painted not ones that I did on um, that I actually filmed um, but I didn't go back and put the um, the varnish on them straight away and even though I'd painted the the Agrellan Earth um, in, in the same way because I hadn't varnished it it's like it continued to dry um, and some of it actually started to some of the individual bits started to flake off um, and but once I sort of varnished it and put some of those um, bits back in place varnished it sealed it all up then it stopped that so um, yeah the the varnish will, will especially keep the Agrell and Earth base there in place. So just using a matte varnish, um, A, because it's the only varnish that I've got, but also there's no surfaces on here that I want to be reflective. 
Um, so the matte varnish will just leave it looking as it is, um, but we'll give it a, a hard wearing um, outer coat so that the, the paint um, nowhere across the mini will, will get damaged. So um, yeah, this is the, the matte varnish that I'm using at the moment, just the Vallejo one. Um, and yeah, I just put a couple of drops into my plastic palette. Um, I'm not watering it down at all. Um, like I've, I've mentioned a couple of times, I just followed some, um, some sort of guidance in some videos that I watched. They said don't, to, um, don't water it down. So I've avoided doing that and it's been working really well so far. So um, yeah, just undiluted, just straight from the bottle. Um, quick couple of drops. Um, and for a job like this, just using um, one of my original brushes that I got that I keep around now just for these jobs where um, it doesn't matter so much if I don't look after the bristles um, as much as I could be. Um, so I'm just going to use one of my, yeah, just one of these older ones. This is just a size 4 and this will, this will do the job fine. Um, all I do is just a little bit of water on the bristles, um, but yeah, no actual water. In the varnish. So yeah, so we'll just uh, put this varnish on. Obviously, being mindful of of these tufts of grass, um, might have been a good idea to have done the varnish before them. I'm not actually sure if if it matters, um, but yeah, in the future I might varnish first and then um, then glue the bits on that need to go in on after that. So that just so that the the varnish doesn't doesn't muck anything up. But yeah, so I'll just be mindful around there. But everything else, just uh, yeah, a little bit of water on the bristles, varnish on, um, and then we'll come back after that to finish the video off. That varnish has dried and being the last step that means that our dark druid is finished. Another Mansions of Madness miniature done, ready to join the box and uh, go up with the other with the other baddies to take on the paranormal investigators. So yeah, very very very, very simple mini. Um, not much going on. Um, but had a had a bit of fun painting painting this guy. Um, you know, that sort of magic stick there with the the green blended through to the blue, through to the purple there for that smoke there, happy with the effect that I got there. Um, and in the robe, happy with some of the highlighting that I got done, um, more so on the front rather than than the back. Um, just, you know, as I sort of mentioned a bit earlier in the video, just some of these spots um, with the highlighting through, um, through the folds, through the robe down the bottom here that I think could be blended a little bit better. Um, but... I find with a, with a mini like this where it's it's very very small. Um, like if I bring in um, and <laughs> I've done this plenty of times in these videos so far, but if I bring in just one of the dropper bottles, I mean you can see the size of the mini there, very very small. Um, but when there is a little bit of detail in it like this with with the folds in there, where there's a really really short distance from like the peak of the fold to um, the lowest part of the fold, it's I find it really, really hard to get that smooth blend. Um, so it ends up being quite um, sort of quite a solid line, I suppose, going from the highlight through to the shadow. So that's something that I'm sort of working on. But, um, you know, th these folds up along here, really happy with how they're looking. Um, some of these highlights in through there, across the top of the sleeve, catching the edge, happy with how that's looking. So yeah, so there's some parts there that I really, really like, some other parts that I think could be worked on. But what I, uh, uh, you know, a part that I'm really, really happy with is just these um, little tufts of grass. I mean, they're obviously, I haven't made them, I just bought them. It was through the site that I get them from and it's in Australia. So, you know, depending on which part of the world, um, prices are going to be different, but it was ten dollars for a pack of seventy-seven of these, and these are the the tiniest ones. And I think there's thirty of these tiny ones. Thirty. Well, if I could just bring it in. Uh, that's so. I've got the mountain tufts there. Ah, there they are. So the one I used here was the was the swamp tufts, and you can see there's there's the three that I took off there. Um, so there's. 
well, get the light to stop reflecting. There we go. So there's, yeah, 30 of the small ones, which are the ones that I used, 35 of the medium ones and 12 of the big ones. And all of that was was $10. Um, so, yeah, didn't didn't make them. Um, but really, um, really good effect. Um, and I think if they were sort of mixed in with some other ones, other different types, um, that look really, really cool. But, yeah, so overall, um, happy with the, the Dark Druid. Pretty simple, but, um, yeah, happy with how it's come up. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for spending some time watching me paint another Mansions of Madness mini. Really do appreciate any time that you guys put into watching these. Um, yeah, as always, please do leave a comment down below, something that you like about the video, something that you think can be improved, so I can keep making these as, as good as possible for you guys. Um, and yeah, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching so that you can keep up to date with when these videos keep coming out. So other than that, don't really think there's anything else to say. So this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.